What's up, historians? Thank you for tuning in to another, well, actually our first set review for historic anthology number four. Uh, this is like actually quite controversial, and we want to preface this by saying that um, this is not the podcast, but uh, we do want to get make sure that our news comes out uh, timely in a timely fashion. And I think this is like pretty big. I think we all agree this is like pretty big in the realm of historic. So we want to like get this out to you guys as quickly as possible, and uh, let you in on our insight of what we think of the historic anthology set number four. So what is set uh, number four for anthology? Well, every so often, you know, last year we got like two, uh, but this year it looks like we're getting one so far. And it's a set of cards that Wizards has decided to add into the historic format. Um, and they're quite random and they could shake up the format quite a bit. And the price for these cards, uh, it's a bundle cost of 4,000 gems or 25,000 gold. Now, we're going to give our like insight whether we think this is worth it or not. Uh, so please be sure to stay tuned to the end of the episode for that. And this bundle will be available March 11th all the way up to June 10th. Um, we also want to make sure that we stay. If you are not able to get these cards by June 10th, you can always just use your wild cards if you really want some of these cards um, and burn your wild cards on that. So, <clears throat> but within that time frame, you know, you can get the bundle, you can kind of pick and choose what you want. And then once again, the legality is in, in historic um, as of right now. So, um, I think we should just get right into it, right? Let's just talk about the cards or yeah, yeah anything let's do you it. want to say? No, I mean, yeah, just get into it. Yeah. All right, cool. So um, this is like quite funny, I think. Wizards, <laughs> it seems to be really proud of this set. And initially I thought this set was uh, a little disappointing. There is some cards that I I do like, um, but we'll go, we'll go into them. So we'll just start it off. First thing Wizard says is uh, we got some juicy new additions to white. Um, <laughs> yikes. Yeah. I love that word. I don't know about juicy. <laughs> so the first one we have yeah. is Triumphant Reckoning. Six colorless, three white. So six white, white, white. Nine mana for a mythic rare sorcery. Return all artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hoshi. You love white. What do you think about this card? Uh, this is garbage. Uh, it reminds me of the Rise of the Dark Realm that's in Historic right now. And no one plays that aside from like a couple like jank decks, you know, that try and reanimate the graveyard. White doesn't have a good way of putting stuff in the graveyard. Uh, and nine is a lot uh, to cast its sorcery speed. Uh, I mean, uh, how is this a mythic? <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's trash. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Drunken? Yeah, I, I share everything you say. I actually think it's even worse than Rise of the Dark Realm because because it is in white and not in black. So I think that opportunity yeah. cost is like much higher. Mm -hmm. Real drop the ball on this one. It is a definite garbage bulk rare, bulk mythic. It's Yeah, it sucks. Don't like mm -hmm. it. Don't care for it. This is a turn four format, so... Uh, next one, though, however, might have some different opinions. A declaration in Stone, one colorless, one white for a sorcery at rare. Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. Let's swing it back to Hoshi. What do you think of this as a, an exile effect for white? I think it's good. I think it's a very fair card. It's exile. Uh, it hits all creatures of that type but there's also a downside to it where you give them something which is a uh, reminiscent of path of exile in a uh, swords to plowshare where you exile something but they get something for it investigate is pretty good uh, if people don't know what that is uh, that means you get a clue token which is a colorless artifact token that you can pay to and sacrifice and you draw a card for it so you're not giving them something that they can immediately take advantage of i guess but uh, I still think it's it's pretty good removal. I mean, it's not swords or path, but it's still it's pretty good. Uh, sorcery speed kind of sucks. I just wish it was instant. Uh, but pretty sure um, investigate actually does even have the cost. It's just sack draw a card. Is it? I thought it was two. I, I, think, it was it's two. I think you get a treasure. No treasures or sack. Um, you get a land. Investigate a uh, clue is paid to sack 
draw a card. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, either way, that's still really good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, um, Drunken, what do you think about this card? Uh, I think it's great. Um, it sees play in modern. It sees play in legacy. This is not modern mm -hmm. or legacy, but it's still like it, it is a good format to, to have this card. I think it's absolutely going to see play. If you compare it to something like Seal Away or Baffling mm -hmm. End, which are both two mana exile spells, but these two are enchantments, right? And yeah. uh, they both have drawbacks actually um because if either of these leave they get either a creature back or a three three green dinosaur um so mm -hmm. you know i i play these a lot in like uh in my in the selesnia deck the life gain deck and i also play this i play the seal away card a lot in my um in my esper flash deck and uh and these things get removed surprisingly a lot so like to permanently exile a creature and it doesn't have to be converted mana cost three or less and it doesn't have to be tapped is incredibly powerful it is at sorcery speed which takes you know which takes a little bit of the power level away and it does give a clue token but the fact that it it like has added advantage to like hey this person has like four burning tree emissaries out and you know, and a fucking, I don't know, and and whatever that equipment is that gives it double strike and plus one, plus one. You know, um, I think this Timber is cleave. a great card for, for those types of situations. For hyper aggro decks, I think it's mm -hmm. it's wonderful. It does allow the aggro player to draw a card, which is unfortunate, but um, there's still a cost attached to that. So I, I love this. I think this is one of the best cards in the set. Yeah. Initially, I thought this was like kind of underwhelming, but considering the power level of Historic, it's obviously not on the power level as Pioneer, Modern, or Legacy. I think this is a, a jump in the right direction. Um, I would love to see Swords of Plowshare. I would love to see Path to Exile. I think White desperately needs that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a step in the right direction. It's a target of removal. White desperately needs it. Has a downside, which is unfortunate. But again, uh, when you take in consideration the power level of Historic, I think it's okay. It's fair. Um, moving on, the final new juicy addition to white. <laughs> we have uh, Thraben In Inspector. It is one white for a creature human soldier, a 1-2. When Thraben Inspector enters the battlefield, investigate. Hoshi, take it away. It's great. I love, it's a one drop for a 1-2, and you get a token that can draw you a card. It's a soldier. I like soldiers. I like this card. Uh, I think it's good for white weenies, definitely. Nice. Yeah. Drunken, what about you? Yeah, I love the card. I agree with everything Hoshi said. Yeah, add on common. This is great for death and taxes as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's great for green, white, uh, hate bears. This can slot in really well. Definitely has a four of. Really love it. Love that it has uh, investigate. Uh, it's a solid card. We'll definitely see play. Uh, this card will definitely see play. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so. <laughs> Like I said, like I said before, I think Wizards seems to be really proud of themselves with this set. Like they, they're like, they're thinking they're witty. They're thinking they're like making like funny commentary. So the next line of text that they say is graveyard shenanigans for those of you up to no good. It's like, okay, these better be good graveyard shenanigans. Uh, we get think twice. <laughs> uh, one colorless, one blue for a instant at uncommon. Draw a card and then it has flashback. Two colorless and a blue. If you don't know what flashback is, uh, I believe it was in the original uh, Guilds of Ravnica. Innistrad. But essentially when it goes... Innistrad, okay. Yeah, right there. Symbol's right there in front of my face. Um, <coughs> when it's in the graveyard, you can actually pay its flashback cost and then um, cast the card again, and then it gets exiled after that. So, um, yeah, let's go turn it over to Hoshi, the most experienced blue mage. <laughs> Think twice. <laughs> I, I think it's good in a I think it's good in a uh, control matchup where you're just in a long drawn out battle where you're just drawing cards and nonsense but I don't think it really fits into historic well uh, with how hyper aggressive the uh, the strategies are but I, I do think you will see this card for sure people are definitely gonna play this uh, in like Azorius control I think can can make use of this uh, yeah if they're stalling out the game. It's pretty good. I think it's fair, for sure. Drunken, what about you? Um, I really like this card. I played it a lot when it was uh, legal and, and standard. I played it in Modern in my Storm deck. 
Um, I think it does something that you want to be doing in like storm style decks. And we have stuff like that in uh, historic, fortunately, you know, we have ways to just cast a shit ton of spells and this works perfectly because, hey, look, you, you not only cast it once, you can cast it twice. And like when you have things doing mana reduction for casting costs, it works both with flashback and the original cost. Um, and when you compare it to something like uh, Radical Idea, um, which was in uh, whatever, ret the not Return to Rav the newest Ravnica set with that yeah. was one in a blue draw a card and then it had the jumpstart ability where you had to discard to use this ability again. Like, I think it's actually significantly better than that. Um, even though it exiles yeah. itself at the end, I the fact that um, you don't have to discard to draw, I think is an added benefit, maybe, depending on what kind of deck you're doing, unless discarding is what you're trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm really happy to use this. I'm looking forward to using it in control, and I'm looking forward to using it in uh, blue-red, like tempo, aggro-style decks. Yeah, I agree with you both. Uh, we're definitely going to see this card in play. It's definitely going to be in a control shell. Uh, I like that you brought up uh, Tempo. I think that's a really good idea. And obviously Azorius Control. Um, so moving on. Yeah, Think Twice. It's pretty good. Pretty solid. We're definitely going to see play. But this card, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys feel a little bit differently. Spider Spawning. Four colorless and a green for a uncommon sorcery. Create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach for each creature card in your graveyard. It also has flashback for six colorless and a black. So it's demanding Golgari here. Hoshi. This feels like... Said, <laughs> it, it, this just feels like a card that would come uh, as like a, a random bolt card that you get in like a commander set. You know, where you'd be like, I'm going to replace this one immediately. That's what it feels like to me. I don't, I don't think it's good. That's not wrong because yeah. it's definitely in some commander sets for sure. <laughs> uh, Drunken, what about you? Um, so I like this card a lot. Um, I, do I think it's going to be good? No. But when we got back <laughs> into Magic, like back when Innistrad was around, I remember like I opened this card and I was like, whoa, this card's fucking awesome. I'm like a huge <laughs> black green nerd and I want to just make all my graveyard shit go out of control. And like in, in reality, yeah. it's, not, it's not great, but I, I think there are better deck builders. There are definitely better deck builders than me that could potentially make this work somehow. And um, I, I'm just excited to see it like, and I hope it works. You know, I think there is potential. I just, you know, probably not though. In, in the actual historic format, I don't see this uh, being played at all. I think it's just too slow, unfortunately, at five mana. But in historic brawl, you know, as a one of, as uh, it's kind of like mid to late game, I can see this uh, being used and being like a really great like game ender. Uh, so I definitely see it being more used in historic brawl. And something that I've noticed with this set is I think they're trying to cater to historic brawl uh a little bit as well yeah something also that um i thought when i first saw this card i was like they just gave me a shitty card that you open from a pack like that you immediately just toss away you know like this is supposed to be an anthology set like it's supposed to be like some big set that you're paying money for and they just gave me like a card that i immediately forget about but you know in hindsight i think that this will probably see the most play in historic brawl all right our final graveyard shenanigan a card that I play in Commander. Adorned Pouncer. One colorless, one white for a creature, one one cat. Um, it is at rare. It has double strike and eternalize for three colorless and two white. Eternalize, uh, if I believe off the top of my head, you exile the card from your graveyard. You create a 4-4 four, four, um, token copy of this card, except that it's a, a zombie in addition to its other types. And it also... Um, has no mana cost, uh, if that's relevant for any other opponent spells. So, Hoshi, what do you think about this card? I love it. I love this cat. Uh, I definitely played it in my uh, my cat uh, commander deck that I used to have, the one with the uh, uh, the 
man, uh, the eminence. Yeah, the eminence commander. I forget what his name is. He's that big, like, lion guy. And it was it's amazing like Rock, in that Rockbow deck. Or something like that. Yeah, some dumb name. Uh, but that this card was amazing in that deck because it got the buff, like, immediately from it. So it swinging in as, like, a, you know, 4 1 double strike or something. Uh, I don't think it's going to be great in Historic, but I do I do love this card. And I think it's going to be great in Historic Brawl because I want to make my Ren and Siri deck, and this is definitely going in it. So <laughs> I, like, I like the card. I like cards like this. I was really kind of upset when they did the uh, Amonkhet Remastered and this card was not in there. So, I mean, I would have re- preferred to have it in there in the first place, but I'm, I'm still glad I'm getting it. So yeah, that's it. Agreed. Uh, Drunken, what about you? Uh, I think this card's bad. Um, I think, so in Historic right now, uh, we have two other uh, cards that always have double strike and that are two converted mana costs, one in white. Um, so we have Fencing Ace, which is a human soldier. And then the more important one is Core Blade Master, Core Blade Master, which is a double striking uh, warrior. And it says equipped warriors you control have double strike. So there's like mm-hmm. added benefits to this card and it's an uncommon. Yeah. So it's doing pretty much, it's doing a lot more, I feel like, in the in what you want to be doing with an equipped creature with double strike, right? Like, I mean, that's mm-hmm. generally what you want with a 1-1 is you want to be equipping it or, or putting auras or something on it. And um, I just think this achieves something a little bit better than that you know the e- e- eternalize or whatever the fuck it's called um is is sweet but you know five mana is expensive and uh, i just like the core warrior better but but this one's a okay. kitty i thought yeah. you would have loved that i mean I, I mean yeah it goes <laughs> with me you know it's more fitting with you know my, yeah. uh, my persona <laughs> but uh, unfortunately no i'm spiking right now all right uh, okay <laughs> Um, yeah, agreed. I I love this card. I mean, I love this card in Commander, is what I mean to say. Like, this card has a very special place in my heart. I hope it has some play in Historic Brawl. If we get some more cats, and like Hoshi said, Ren and Siri, that's an interesting idea that I didn't think of. Um, but yeah, I just unfortunately don't think this will see play in the Historic format. Moving on, um... You know, Wizards just, they're just all on the meme game. They just know all the cool stuff kids say. Who's feeling down for some historic and chill? Like, ugh, cringe. <laughs> but, uh, so that is two, super cringy. Two blue cards here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they're pretty ridiculous. So let's just start it off. We have Iceberg Cancrix. Cancrix? I, I, mm. I don't know. One colorless, one blue for a snow creature crab, zero four. Whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player mill two cards. Oh, mill's back, baby, and uh, they seem to get another weapon. So, Hoshi, what do you think about this car- uh, this uh, ice crab? Uh, I like it. I, I think it's a good card. Zero four is pretty great. Uh, so it could also go into like defensive decks. Uh, like the, uh, you know, the wall decks that attack. So uh, if you wanted to do like a wall mill strategy, I guess, with snow permanence, yeah, that sounds right up my alley, I guess. Some weird janky nonsense. Uh, I know, I do think it, it's a good card. And I don't know why crabs make you mill stuff. Uh, I'm sure all the people that cry about mill are going to hate this card, but I think it's good. Nice. Uh, Drunken, what about you? Um, yeah, I really like it. Uh, I, I'm going to compare it to Rune Crab, right? That's the other crab yeah. that mills. Um, so yeah. in comparison to Rune Crab, like, I think there is potential where this is actually better than that. And I really like, um, I really like Rune Crab. And um, where it's better is if you're doing like a mono blue mill deck. And, um, you know, in that case, every land you're going to run in there is probably going to be snow pretty much, except for, I don't know, maybe a few. Um, and um, I, I think the potential here is really high, um, especially with that new legendary creature that came out of Jumpstart, where whenever you mill cards, you mill double. Um, I forget what the oh, hell yeah. it's called. Br- Bruvac. Yeah, Bruvac. Yeah, Bruvac. Yeah. Bruvac. Um, mm-hmm. with that and the other rune crab, like I, I really like it. And then, you know, make it even spicier. You put in the, the planeswalker that, um, makes you mill into exile. 
What the fuck is that card? I, I can't. Uh, Ashiok. Ashiok? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Ashiok. And so, like, I really, really want to make a mono blue mill deck. Like, I've tried it. I actually have one. It's just complete fucking garbage. And so <laughs> now there's here's another piece. So um, I'm, I'm also glad that they're adding snow, more snow stuff, because there's definitely not enough snow support right now. So uh, it's great. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, I really like this card. This is uh, something I want to like kind of point out to everyone out there. A lot of these cards, you know, they, they're not going to be game breaking. What, what they do, though, is add pieces to already like solidified formats or maybe push them up a tier or two. Mill is one of those decks. And I love the thing I love most about it is the snow. Uh, we've talked about this in past episodes. Be sure to check those out because, uh, yeah, I want to see more snow and this is kind of like a good direction. I think a lot of these cards go in a good direction. Um, so seeing more snow, mill snow, that sounds really cool, really interesting to see that. Um, completely dig it. So moving on, the last one of the historic and chill section, we have Merit Lage's Slumber. It is also one colorless and a blue for a legendary snow enchantment. Um, so with the snow again, whenever Merit Lages Slumber or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, sacrifice Merit Lages Slumber. If you do, create Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. Yikes. <laughs> Hoshi, what do you think about this card? <laughs> yes, I love this card. I think it's great. Uh, I, I mean, the fact that it's legendary means it probably won't see too much play, I don't think, in uh, Historic. But I, st I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I like the fact that it scries immediately. Uh, getting, I feel like, 10 snow permanents shouldn't be too hard uh, especially with them adding new snow permanents in there. I mean, you could just run this as an alt wind condition if you're running snow lands, you know. So uh, I, I think it's, I think this is really good, especially with that new snow, that ring that they make where it makes a bunch of copies of itself. Uh, once it gets a, uh, I forget what the name of that uh, artifact is, but it makes a bunch of different snow permanents. Uh, so that combined with this, you could maybe get if you can add more tokens onto that, you may be able to get this out pretty quick. And uh, I mean, in 2020, flying indestructible thing is is, is awesome. I, I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. I don't know how good this will be uh, with our current snow meta, but I, I do like that it's moving in a good direction of making snow like a, uh, a format that might be able to be played in, in historic. So yeah, I think it's a cool addition. Nice. Uh, Drunken, what about you? Yeah, I really like it. Um, I, I mean, I think it's fun when I say I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it's going to make an impact on Historic at all. Um, but yeah, like Hoshi said, it's nice to have more snow. And also, um, I think it goes really well with Iceberg, uh, uh, Cancerix, however you say that. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, in that type of deck, you know, like some type of weird mono blue tempo control deck. And uh yeah, I think it's cool. It's like a newer version of Dark Depths, which making a 2020 Flying Indestructible is fucking sweet, man. I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It a lot. yeah it's silly. It's hilarious. I completely dig this uh, style of cards. Um, I just will say, if there's no way to accelerate snow permanence, um, if there's no way to get snow as quickly as possible, uh, then this is not going to be a thing. If there is ways to get snow to accelerate um you know whether like hoshi's idea or whatever you know if there's a way to accelerate this will be a thing for sure snow something will be relevant in historic um but definitely historic brawl i believe so moving on uh this this one i think is the dumbest one that wizard said like this i, I don't know where where they're going with this shining swords and shouting goblins like peanut butter and chocolate like i really think you know Cade is really proud of himself in the intern department like this this guy he's just like yeah i'm gonna pick three cards like these cards have nothing to do with each other and they couldn't be either more far from being peanut butter and chocolate but what am i talking about so sword of body and mind yes you heard me right a sword Three colorless mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two. 
has protection from green and from blue. Whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you create a 2-2 green wolf creature token, and that player mills 10 cards. Equip cost of 2. Um, Hoshi, what do you think about this card? I mean, <laughs> immediately when I saw the sword, I was like, oh, a Mirrodin sword is in a historic now? Yes, this is amazing! And then I was like, oh, it's body and mind. <laughs> it's, oh, well. I mean, at the same time, I am kind of relieved it's not one of the crazy swords, you know, uh... But it, I mean, it, it's a it's a gateway. We got one sword, all right. We're we're getting there, right? We got one sword. It's definitely not the best sword, or, or the second best, or the third best sword. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst. Ar, ar, arguably, <laughs> it's it's the worst of the old swords, right? The newer swords kind of suck. Uh, so of the old swords, this is the worst one, but it's still cool. It's just a weird card and you get a wolf and then you mill 10 cards. I don't exactly know what kind of deck this like slots into besides in brawl. Uh, but I am gonna make it whatever it is. I'm definitely putting this in a deck. I love swords. I love equipment. So this is definitely going in some kind of uh, like mill slash aggro deck. I guess <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mill aggro. It's a thing. Game. Besides, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> maybe rogues. I, uh, rogues are rogues are mill aggro, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe maybe this fits in rogues. I don't know. Yeah, that's. That's interesting. Yeah, that's, no. that's actually a good point. Uh, I don't know if there's something else you want to be doing for five mana, but I mean, you yeah. shut your mouth. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Drunken, what about you? <laughs> um, so I really like this card. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's definitely not one of the best swords, but um, I think it fits into the format really well. And uh, I think I, I don't. I don't think it's going to make an impact. But like this deck I was just talking about, this mill strategy, like I could totally just equip it onto my fucking stupid ass snow crab which is a zero four make it a two six <laughs> and it has protection yeah. from the most powerful color in historic which is green and probably the third most powerful color which is blue um so all of a sudden like they can't you know brazen borrow your creature right because it has mm -hmm. protection from blue they also can't block with their green creatures which like is about i don't know 60 percent of the decks you see out there at least and so um i think the fact that you can mill them 10 is impactful and uh you mm -hmm. know having to do this like especially you know we'll say magical christmas land you know you have that guy whenever you mill a card you mill two you know then all of a sudden they're milling 20 that's a that's pretty much two two attacks and they're dead you know um so yeah. i like this card i think there's potential here and i'm excited to use it and you get a wolf. You get a blocker too. That's the I think the least exciting part about this card. But yeah, you do. You're right. It is. It is something though. It's it's value. Yeah, I think this card has an identity crisis. To be honest, once again, <laughs> going back to wizards, I think like they just have like honestly, I don't know, man. Like they don't know what they're doing. They're like Uro's a problem. Green blue's a problem. Simix is an issue. Let's put this card in. You, you got rid of Uro. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you killed you killed Green and Blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're a little too late, bud. Yeah. Like, so, so what are you trying to use this in? What I was thinking was Simic Flash. So you have protection against Simic Flash. Like, like this card is has an identity crisis. It screams like you know Mill Deck or some kind of like Green Blue shenanigans. Which again, Simic Flash is what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. And then it's only good against you know that said deck you know if you're playing mono blue i guess mono blue tempo but their stuff is flying so it's irrelevant mm. big green dumb creatures well i i hope for five mana you're not dead because green kill green stompy they can just they'll stomp you before then you know before you get this down and actually makes an impact so i don't know i love the swords i have a, i have an affinity for the swords i think this one is one of the weakest one of the older swords as hoshi stated I think it has an identity identity crisis, um, unfortunately. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, goblin Gavalier, one red for a creature goblin warrior at um, uncommon or common. Sorry, it has trample. Goblin Gavalier gets plus two plus zero for each equipment attached to it. 
Hoshi, you love the equipment. Voltron, is this I card do. worth anything? I think it's great, actually. Uh, the fact that it's a warrior means that it slots perfectly into the weird janky, uh, like, warrior deck that we have, equipment warrior deck that we have, where it has that, that one instant card that equips a... Uh, artifact on or an uh, equipment onto your warrior creature so this counts as that it has trample so if you get the 10 10 stupid hammer on this thing right it's got trample already and it gets an extra 2 2 so this thing has become a what that's 10 11 13 yeah it's a 13 something with trample it's pretty sweet <laughs> I Res- think. resolute yeah. strike is the card What's that? Resolute Strike is that card you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's great because it's a one-drop, too, right? So, in that deck, you don't want to have a bunch of high creature costs. You want to be able to get them down early and get that hammer on them quick and kill your opponent. It, it actually, yeah, so. it, it, it becomes uh, 14 because Resolute Strike oh, is gives it? it plus two, plus two. Oh, well, then it would be 15, then, actually. Oh, 15, yeah, yeah, 15, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Math and stuff. Pretty, Pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> 15 damage, not bad. <laughs> yeah. I think pretty good. <laughs> uh, Drunken, what about what about you? Yeah, I like it. Uh, I agree with everything Hoshi said. I, like I said in the podcast this last week, uh, I've been playing like a similar deck to this, so I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with everything. Um, I think this is something that the equipment decks need. And I just want to point out, like flavor-wise, I love that he's holding that colossus hammer (laughs) 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 i think it looks really cool yeah Um, all right so our final artifact matters equipment matters kind of card is bone splitter for one colorless artifact equipment equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and has an equip cost of one hoshi what do you think about this card meh it's all right i I don't yeah it's all right drunken drunken (laughs) <laughs> uh, I th- I think it's great. Uh, it's it's definitely like the most powerful one drop, one equip uh, artifact that we have in historic. Um, and uh, I think I think if there's going to be anything that's going to help the equipment deck, it's going to be something like this. Um, so I, I'm excited to test it out. I, I don't, but you know, who knows? Yeah, whether we see four of or none of, um, that is yet to be seen. I do like this card. It has been a staple um, in Magic's history for a very long time. I'm very excited to see where it goes. I think it'll be good in the equipment decks, but once again, testing will tell. Um, Ask yourself, does this card spark joy? If not, these discard enablers can help. Like, oh man, like, I swear, I, I don't know about you guys, I, I, I hate these. I hate, I hate everything Wizards is saying to me right now. <laughs> these are not funny, they're not witty, they're not cool. Uh, whatever. All right, so we have like, disca- like discard cards, I guess. Uh, Torment of Scarabs, three colorless, one black for an enchantment or a curse at uncommon. Enchant player, at the beginning of enchanted player's upcle- upkeep, that player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. Hoshi, take it away. Uh, I just, I think this is a bad version of like uh, the lantern that we just got, the Theragrid's lantern, uh, which is I think the same price for this. I, I don't know, mate. Yeah, I just don't think it's gonna see play. It's okay. I just think it's it's not going to see play. I, I, I can't imagine a deck that I would really want to put this in. Drunken. Um, drunken. Yeah, I have nothing to say about it. It's not exciting. It's expensive, yeah. yeah. Garbage. Um, too expensive. Maybe if it was uh, mana cheaper, we could be talking about it. But other than that, this thing is too slow and doesn't do much. So... Moving on, Flame Blade Adept for one red for a creature Jackal Warrior 1-2 with Menace. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, Flame Blade Adept gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Hoshi. Yikes. Uh, yeah, this is, seems pretty good for the uh, <laughs> the cycle decks. Uh, I like it. I think it's uh, this is going to be pretty, pretty dangerous. Uh, I don't play cycles, so I don't really have... Uh, 
you know, a lot of experience in it, but I played against it quite a few times and uh, it's pretty strong. So, I mean, maybe this will make it uh, have a comeback. I haven't seen Cycle in Historic in a while, so maybe this will spark some interest in it again. I don't know. Yeah, past priority. Drunken. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely think we'll see it for sure. Whether it's going to be good or not, I don't know. I fucking love it. It, it seems powerful. Um, so I'm excited to see it. Um, I play, I used to play Cycle, Just Guy Cycle, uh, a lot actually, and it very quickly fizzled out as the meta started strengthening up. Gruel took over everything, Soul Tide destroys everything, and then it just became a pet deck of mine. This card is definitely going to change that. I like it. It's going to be seen for sure in Cycle. I really hope that it helps Cycle come back uh, to Tier 2 and be competitive. Um, time will tell, but I'm definitely going to play it. Definitely going to slot it in. Uh, Faith of the Devoted. Two colorless, one black for an enchantment at Uncommon. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Hoshi, take it away. Uh, I don't think this is great. I feel like this is when you're winding down in cycle. Uh, where you're running out of cards, right? So you're like, oh, maybe I'll pay the mana now to to do the the ping. Uh, and it it I think this would be a better card if it actually had cycle on it, uh, but it does not. Uh, so it kind of I think this weakens actually the cycle deck. Uh, it doesn't feel like something that they want to put down immediately. It's just the fact that you have to pay the one. If you didn't have to pay the one, this would be an amazing card. But yeah, that that I think that even one mana like that, it really just kills this card. So yeah, pass priority. Agreed. Um, yeah, drunken. Same. Same thing. Yep, completely agree. Um, all right, here we go. Make some time to brush up on your good elf, bad elf routine. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not a good elf. And the bad elf is not a bad elf. So we have Lease Alana Huntmaster, two colorless, two green for a creature elf warrior at common. It is a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast an elf spell, you may create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. Uh, Hoshi. Uh, I think that this would have been a good card to introduce a while ago into elves. I feel like at this power point in elves, this is not going to make an impact in historic Maybe it's good that it's a common. So for people like just getting in and wanting to make an elf deck, this is a nice like I can slot this in until I get more powerful elves in my deck. Uh, but Collected Company doesn't hit it. Uh, but it is nice that every time you cast an elf spell, you get an extra elf. So I think it's a decent elf. I just don't think it matches up to the power level of our current elves that we have. It's yeah, it's like a filler if you don't have wilds. Uh, I'll pass. Yeah, I uh, I actually like it. Um, I, don't, I don't. I will try it in my elf deck. I not like four copies of it because, like uh, Hoshi said, collected company is not going to hit it. But uh, I will try two because I end up like casting elves pretty often in that deck. Surprisingly, I mean not surprisingly, but uh, I think it will make an impact um, because. It's, you know, you get as many elves as you cast elves. It's not one per turn or anything like that. So uh, I, I do like this. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, in a world where Collected Company exists, uh, I just can't see this card being used. Unless, for the reasons Hoshi stated, um, if you're just building an elf deck and you don't have the wild card or something like that. Or maybe Historic Brawl. Um, but oh, that, yeah. I you know, uh, mm -hmm. maybe there, but um, other than that, I, I just don't see it with in a world where a collected company exists. So, um, Abomination of Lanawar for one colorless, one black, one green for a legendary creature, elf horror at uncommon. It is a star, star, uh, vigilance with menace. Abomination of Lanawar's power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. Um, I'm actually going to start it off with Drunken, uh, since he likes Golgari and some graveyard shenanigans. What do you think about this card? Uh, it's funny you started off with me, because originally I was like, nah, I'm like mediocre on this card. But uh, Hoshi turned me around. I didn't realize that it, it matters based on 
the else in your graveyard, which is impactful, right? Because uh, I w what I basically was saying before is if you cast this on turn three, it's a one, one for three, but no, uh, if they wipe your board and you cast on turn three, then it's however fucking powerful, you know, you, it, however many else are in your graveyard. So I think this card's pretty good. It's legendary though. So you only want to run like maybe two in your deck. Um, uh, the fact that it has menace and vigilance is dope. Agreed. Um, Hoshi, what about you? I love it. Uh, I only will run one of these, but I will run this in my deck. And I love that it's three. It gets hit by Collected Company, so you can throw this thing out. It can be massive. So it's it's like the one thing that you got to remember is that elves have so many anthems, right? So this is already a giant creature, and it has Menace and Vigilance, and it's whatever other anthems you have on top of it, too. So this thing is going to be huge, uh, I feel like. And it, having to block something like that, they have to devote two blockers to something that's... this is clearly going to be what they have to block because this is going to be the biggest creature and it had it having menace like that makes you being able to finish them i think in one swing uh, a lot easier so i think it's a great card maybe two i don't know I, I i really do think it's it's pretty good but i will definitely be running one in my deck um i love this card i love it in historic brawl i love it in regular historic this is tarmogoyf for elves <laughs> pretty much yeah. plain and simple uh, I, mm -hmm. I dig it it's it's exactly what elves need uh elves have such huge problems when they get board wiped it's so hard for them to recover and there's so many different avenues you can take with elves well i need card draw engine i need to make sure my hand is filled this is a, a simple solution you drop mm -hmm. it it's x and x you know so gg now <laughs> now handle this card you know while <laughs> yeah. they try to handle that card you can refill your hand and rebuild your board so yeah completely love it for elves um i definitely think we'll see play um at least in historic brawl all right so wizard says new artifacts don't worry we already know some of you are upset we didn't list cold steel heart with the other snow cards <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh you're really reading my mind here wizards <laughs> um inspiring statute st statuary uh three colorless for an artifact at rare non-artifact spells you cast have improvise whoa hoshi what do you think about this card I think it's interesting that it's non-artifact if it was artifact spells it would be crazy uh so I'm sure there's uh, some shenanigans that you can pull off with this deck. Uh, I mean, definitely with the uh, in the colorless deck, I think this could be good. I'm not exactly sure though. I'd have to do I'd have to do more looking into what I could actually build with this. So I'm I'm kind of mediocre right now. I don't know. I'll pass. Drunken. Um, I think this card has the potential to be one of the scariest cards coming out of this entire set. Um, because it says, so basically the way it improvise works is you can tap an artifact. It, it's like convoke, but instead you tap artifacts instead of creatures. And so like, you know, we'll use Mox Amber for an example. So Mox Amber only adds mana for legendary creatures or legendary spells. Well, now Mox Amber with this card adds, uh, you know, can improvise with non-legendary as long as it's also non-artifact. -art, non now, um, where this is important is with Planeswalkers, you know, like, yeah, Mox can add, you know, mana for any Planeswalker, but there's other one-drop artifacts that you can just improvise out um, big ass well, planeswalkers, you're... dope planeswalkers with like these crappy artifacts, you know? And like, I think there's potential to really combo off or do some like really shitty things to make people salty, you know? And uh, I'm excited to see it. And uh, I think the potential's really high with this card. And I'm probably completely wrong, but I am excited to, to fuck around with it. Well, you are wrong with uh... how Mox Amber works. Uh... <laughs> What is it? It's Mox, uh, Mox Amber, where you get to generate one color of mana based on the legendary permanent that you have. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, now it just taps for for a man. You know, it improvises for a, yeah. for a Planeswalker. So it's even better with that card, mm. right? And, um, yeah, mm. I'm excited to try it. Yeah, I think this is a diamond in the rough for sure. Um, I think we're going to see either something really crazy and janky in the forms of, like, Team or Aetherworks Marvel. Um, 
But what what is that to be seen? I have no idea. I I would have to do a lot more research into this card. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely see it in mono brown, uh, for sure. I like it, and I'm I'm just I'm just gonna move on because I have something I want to say at the end that pretty much sums up everything that we're talking about here today. Okay. So cold steel heart. For two colorless for a snow artifact, another snow permanent. Cold Steel Heart enters the battlefield tapped. As Cold Steel Heart enters the battlefield, choose a color. Tap, add one mana of the chosen color. So we have a mana rock for snow. Hoshi, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Uh, I like that they have a snow ramp like this. Uh, I mean, it it seems very fair. It's, uh, you know, it's common. Or it's, yeah, it's a common card. Uh, Yeah, one... The chosen color, more snow. It's good. It's good. Cool. Uh, drunken. Yeah, sounds good. Yep, like it. Um, snow needs it. So, blank moth nexus, a land tap, add colorless, and then you can has an activated ability of pay one mana, one colorless mana. Blink moth nexus becomes a one one blink moth artifact creature with flying until end of turn. It's still land, and then its other ability is one colorless tap it to. Target Blink Moth creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Hoshi. <laughs> uh, I think the second ability is stupid on it, uh, but the first one is pretty great. Uh, I think this will definitely see play in like the uh, colorless artifact decks because I, I think a lot of the lands that we have in Historic right now, they're great. Uh, and being able to make a creature out of your land is awesome. But uh, like crawling barons and all that stuff can be incredibly powerful. But four mana is a lot uh, to pump into. So I feel like you don't get to activate that very often. So you have to make some pretty like difficult decisions on whether you're not going to cast a spell to hold up to turn it into a creature or not. And I feel like with Blink Moth Nexus, you don't have to do that uh, because it's only one. So you're potentially only holding up two mana to turn this thing into a creature for a blocker that you might need or to attack it for that like you know minimal damage that you might need so i think blink moth nexus is way better than any of the other like uh man lands that we actually have right now even though it's significantly weaker but it is flying too so it can get in for a kill maybe yeah i think i think it's really good i think this is one of the best cards in the set um drunken what about you pass <laughs> uh yeah i agree with everything hoshi said i mean uh, the other thing I just add to this is uh, it's a really great mana sink um, because you can, you know, uh, potentially like if you're just holding up mana for counter spells, like with a control deck or something on the end of your opponent's turn, you can make it become a creature, then tap itself, put a counter on it, and then just let it become a land again until eventually you can like, you know, hit have it hit for a, a good amount or block for a good amount. So I, I really like this card. It, it doesn't get a counter. It's until the oh, end of turn. Oh, until end of turn. All right, then I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. I used to play with this in... Uh, I used to play with this card, too, in uh, Modern. Yeah. yeah I, I was actually going to say, I'm surprised you didn't talk about your affinity deck yeah. in Modern, because mm. that's where this card shines. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, again, step in the right direction. I really hope they're trying to make affinity a thing. Uh, artifacts are super cool. I just, mm-hmm. I really hope this is the direction that Wizards is trying to go with Historic. So, moving on, we got some big old dumb creatures. And they say, ah, yes, the classic theme elephant versus crocodile. Didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> apparently it is. So, we have Ham- Hamza, Guardian of Adashin. For four colorless, one green, one white. For a legendary creature, Elephant Warrior at Uncommon, it is a 5-5. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Plus one, plus one counters matter. Drunken, what do you think about this um, Selesnia card? Garbage. Nice. <laughs> Short and simple. Uh, I think maybe it's a, a, a fun brawl commander uh, because, you know, it's legendary. Uh, and then maybe if you want to make like a counters matter Selesnia deck. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's I, I don't think the, the, the thing that sucks about it is the creature spells you cast cost one less. If it made everything else like one less, then then it would be maybe playable. But just the fact that, yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, it sucks. 
um, historic brawl is the only thing I can yeah. think of this in. And uh, yeah, in historic, it's absolute garbage. Um, but yeah, maybe historic brawl as a fun pet deck, I guess. Mm, I guess. All right. So our other five five is Amit Eternal for two colorless, one black for a creature, zombie, crocodile, demon at rare. It has afflict three. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a negative one, negative one counter on Amit Eternal. Whenever Amit Eternal deals combat damage to a player, remove all. Minus one, minus one counters from it. And as I stated, it is a 5-5. Five, five. Drunken, take it away. Uh, I, I think this card's okay. Um, I didn't realize it had a flick three when I originally looked at it. I forgot about this card completely. Um, so I, I don't know. Like, maybe it'll be used. I could see it in mono black. It is a 5-5 five, five for three. Um, and the fact that a flick three, so whenever they block, they lose three life, is uh, it actually matters, right? So even if they block with their 4-4 four, four, you know, they're 3-3. Three, three. If this is a 3-3 three, three at the time, then it kills a creature and they still lose three life. So I, I like that. Uh, Hoshi. Yeah, I think it's potentially good in the, uh, like, a mono black aggro deck. There's a lot of uh, pretty strong cards that mono black has right now in the three drop range, but they all have, like, these kind of weird drawbacks to them, right? Like this one has. So I think it, it fits into those decks. I don't think that they're gonna be you know in the top tier so i i you know we'll see if we if it sees play i don't think it will though another tool for mono black i think it goes mm-hmm. along with rotting uh, regisaur um so yeah mono yeah. black aggro is where i see it and that's where i think it will shine but that mm-hmm. is yet to be seen but um yeah at rare i don't know if people want to spend the cards for this but yeah once again we'll have to see <laughs> All right, we're getting into the final four cards. And Wizard says, plus these three classic cards that nearly fit into an, an obvious category, miscellaneous. So pretty much, here's, a, here's some bulk rares for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have Saw Tusk Demolisher, four colors, two green, for a creature beast, six, six, with trample and mutate, three colorless, one green. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target non-creature permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Drunken. Uh, I think this card is garbage, but I know Hoshi likes it, so I'll just let Hoshi take it away. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's cool. I mean, it's a 6-6 trampler, right? Uh, and then you can, when it mutates, you get to destroy a non-creature permanent. So you can destroy lands with this too. So if you're doing some kind of like land destruction mutate thing, maybe, (laughs) I don't know. It just feels like nice jank to me, I think. Uh, I don't think it's a great card, but I'm I'm glad they put it in, right? (coughs) I feel like they put a lot of bad cards in, and I don't think this is a bad card. I think it's good in like you know, some weird mutate deck that you're doing. So uh, I, I, I like when they if you're add, doing that, you're doing bad stuff though. So it's a bad card. Mutate's just bad. I guess if you're trying to get to mythic, yes, this is not going to get you to mythic, but I mean, in like brawl or something, uh, you know, this is a game. Games are meant to, uh, to be fun. I've heard, uh, I don't think wizards thinks that, but <laughs> no, no, they're not meant <laughs> yeah. to be fun. Or, or, or most people on Reddit don't think that, but I think that it's meant to be fun. I think this is a fun card. Uh, and so I like it in, in that respect. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's, um, it. I actually initially liked Mutate when it first came mm-hmm. out, but, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's a uh, garbage competitively, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, getting rid of Planeswalkers, that could be relevant. Yeah. Um, competitively, though, I just don't see this card being played. Um, maybe Historic Brawl. Uh, Historic Brawl, like Mutate or something. Um, mm-hmm. So moving on, we have Harmless Offering, the cutest card in the entire game of Magic. Two colors, <laughs> one red for a sorcery at rare. Target opponent gains control of target permanent you control and has a little kitty on it. And the guy's like, oh, little kitten. So uh, Drunken, what do you think about this card? Um, I think that there's probably some potential for some cool stuff. Um, I don't know, though. I know uh, fucking Jank Master Jank over here has some pretty good ideas of what he wants to do with it, though. So yeah, take it away, Hoshi. Yeah, there's a lot of like really janky and fun stuff that you can do. <laughs> this now giving stuff to your opponent can be very fun. Uh, sometimes you can do stuff that would be really terrible for you, like uh, 
uh, you know, like nine lives has a big downside to it if it goes away, right? So if you're running a bunch of nine lives in your deck and then you're running something that kills all enchantments or like Ugin or something like that, right? You could just be like, use nine lives to protect yourself and then once it starts getting low, you're just like, hey, guess what? That's yours now, buddy. And by the way, I destroy all enchantments or whatever <laughs> and then kill them that way. So this is that's one of the great, it's one of the great things I love about magic is like weird stuff like that, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> you know what? It's so funny about that card combination. It's like, yeah, I may have lost nine games in a row with this stupid deck, but man, that one time where I got to do harmless <laughs> offering with my nine lives and then I destroyed the nine lives. Yeah. Fucking worth it. Uh, it's so worth it. <laughs> so worth it. Because that person was like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Why are you giving me nine lives? And then. And then you're like, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really sad is where I see this being played is on a drunk night of historic brawl or historic, mm. and Hoshi's eyes are going to be spinning in different directions, <laughs> and he's actually going to pull that off yeah. on me. I oh, will. Yeah. And I'm going to see the little cute kitty, and I'm going to be like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost the game. <laughs> That's where I see this card being played. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. We have collected conjuring two colorless, one blue and a red for a sorcery. Also at rare. Exhale the top six cards of your library. You may cast up to two sorcery spells with mana value three or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Put the exile cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, Drunken, you got anything? Uh, I think this card actually, you know, at first I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool. looks like, you know, roll the dice, which is what Blue and Red is trying to do sometimes, um, or Blue and Red spell casting. But I think it's actually just bad because it's just asking, demanding too much. So it's three converted mana costs or less, and it has to be a sorcery. If it was instant or sorcery, this would be significantly better. But the fact that it's sorcery only at sorcery speed, I'm not excited for this. Um, huh. Hoshi, what do you, well, what do you think? Looks like uh, my camera exploded, but I do like this card. Uh, I think it's pretty good in uh, like the, the Wizards deck that I have, right? Because, so first of all, potentially you are getting six mana for four mana, right? If you're able to cast two three mana spells so that's pretty good uh and then on top of that you uh get the actual cast trigger from it too so i like that about it as well it's uh and i mean yeah, that's magical I I christmas land though that means you ha out of the six it, cards uh, you would have to hit three converted mana costs or less two of them that are yeah. sorcery spells like that's a that's asking a lot Wait, uh, wait, do they have to be so? Oh, up to two sorceries. Yes. Oh, yeah, I didn't really notice yeah, that. It's bad. Uh, yeah, that does make it pretty bad. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yeah. like it anymore. Yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> I initially thought this was like a cool Is It card, like a collected company version for Is It, but uh, then, yeah, once again, seeing that it says sorcery, it's, it's, it's bad. Yeah. All right. Our final card, though. Uh, wizards thinks they're cheeky. Wait, what's that? We've only previewed 24 cards? Don't worry. We didn't want to cast a shadow over the others, so we saved the best for last. <laughs> we have a card that is a um, pretty formidable staple. We have Death's Shadow at one black creature avatar, 1313. Yep, you heard that right. Death's Shadow gets minus X minus X, however, where X is your life total. This is a very interesting card, and it's very powerful in other formats. Um, but how is it going to fare in Historic? Drunken, what do you think? So I have a quick, funny uh, story about this card. I went into uh, the old place I was living at. I went into my room, and uh, when this card was like at its peak, you know, Death Shadow in, um, in Modern, um, it was like worth 40 bucks or something like that. And I walk in the room and like, I, for some reason I had a death shadow sitting on the floor and my fucking cat was just eating it, dude. It was just like chewing on the fucking <laughs> card. And I was like, what the fuck, Charlie? Like, what are you doing? It was just like, nom, 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 nom. I, don't, I don't know why, but, um, yeah, you know what? I I uh, think this card, uh, everyone is super excited for it, and I think this is overhyped. Um, 
because right now there is a very similar card that we talked about in this last week's podcast. What was that card called, uh, Hoshi? Uh, Scourge of the Skyclave. Yeah, Scourge of the Skyclave, and you almost never it, it, see it. Matt, Matt Provins fucking hates that card, yeah. apparently. <laughs> yeah, you almost never see it. It does, it does like yeah. a very similar thing as this. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, uh, except I guess that is your opponent's life and this is your life. That's the difference. Um, I think the big drawback to this card and why it's so good in modern and why it won't be as good is, uh, you don't have a life loss in historic like you do in modern. You don't have fetch lands, which are super important for a deck like this, um, to lose the one life and then lose the other two. So make sure you get your, uh, you know, your shock land into play, um, which is, which is huge. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I hope people, pro- I hope this people eventually prove me wrong, but I don't think this is going to make a huge impact in historic, like at all. Um, Hoshi, what about you? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we do have we have shock lands, but I don't think they're going to be enough to make this card playable. Uh, and like, it, I just don't think our format has the speed to make this thing like super crazy. Uh, I I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people. I mean, people their decks are super hard over this card right now uh, that it's coming into our format. But I just don't think they realize that we don't have the tools to make this card. Uh, you know the power level that it is in the other formats at least from what i've seen and for from what i yeah so i i don't i mean may, maybe eventually it will be which is cool i think a lot of these cards that we got in the set might be powerful eventually right like some of the snow stuff but right now probably not and i feel like this falls into that category cool card probably not going to be great right now maybe later interesting yeah um the reason why this card is so powerful is because of fetch lands and shock mm. lands. Getting that three life every single turn is super relevant for this card. Mm. The only thing I can think of is having shocks and having the modal cards where you lose three life, um, having them untapped. That's true. Yeah. That's the, yeah. That the only way I can see this working. I think that's how you have to build this deck. Um, if it's going to be competitive, I don't know, but I, I think that's the, the exact way you have to do Death Shadow in Historic. So um, mm. I do think we're going to see play. I think people really love this card, and I think mm. they're going to try. But uh, Hoshi made a really good point, and it's a point that I want to point out. But, um, you know, overall, that's, that's, our, that's in Anthology 4. A lot of people have a lot of mixed opinions on it, as I stated in the beginning. A lot of people have a lot of controversy. A lot of people think this set is like meh. Uh, Wizards could have done better. Other people really actually like the cards. Um, So we're going to give our insight on how we think of the anthology set four as a whole. So um, who wants to take it away? Uh, I'll start. Um, So, yeah, you know, initially when I saw this set, I wasn't excited. I was like, oh, man, fucking garbage. You know, twenty five hundred gold or whatever the cost is, is like is bullshit, man. Um, but like after looking at it a few times, you know, like I think initially what I was like, what? There's no fucking Tarma Goyf. There's no like turn two win cons <laughs> in here. Like what the fuck? But like you don't want that, right? Like you don't want that in a set like this. You don't want that in no. a set ever. You know, you don't want a card to, you know, completely change the meta. You want things that will add into decks that like have potential or already exists that'll make them a little bit better or make them a little more consistent and i think it does that it adds snow permanence which is good because snow is fucking garbage in historic um (laughs) it adds like some mill it adds like uh add something to white weenies declaration and stone is great um I, i don't know i really like it a lot of good sideboard options here I, like I said, I really think uh, inspiring statu- statuary looks really cool, and like I think the potential there is high. Um, so overall, I like it, and the fact that you get four of each copy, I, I, I think it is worth it. You know, I, I will get this because I definitely know I'm going to make four copies of Think Twice. I'll make like several copies of Sword of Body and Mind, and. You know, the the 2,400 gold isn't that much to me because I'm a hoarder and I save my gold. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely going to um, I'm definitely going to get it. And I do like it. 
Um, just to alliterate that to everyone out there, it's 25,000. I mean, 25,000. Yeah, more. sorry, 25,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, or 4,000 gems. Um, Hoshi, Anthology 4, man. We're finally getting it. It's coming out. What do you think? This whole set as a whole. So, I mean... In general, I'm glad that they did another anthology. It feels like it's been forever since they did the last one. The last one came out a really long time ago. I feel like people are pretty down on this one from what I've been looking into so far and like all the discussions I've heard from other people. And I just feel like that's because the last anthology set that they put out was Gangbusters. I mean, they had Ulamog in that thing. They had Tempered Steel, all of the Hondins, you know, the Shrines. There was just like, uh, you know, Amiari's Wake was in there. There's so much good stuff in the last one. And But if they look at the other ones, the other ones are kind of like this one. Uh, two and one, they were both like, they had a couple good cards in there, but there was a lot of garbage in there. And I think it's people are judging this set based on the last uh, anthology one, which was which was really good. Uh, you think that's and so really this w- good. You think? I, th- I mean, I the think only so, two yeah. cards you name there that are even used in historic are tempered steel and uh, and Ulamog. And I mean, Ulamog is and, a fucking oh, powerhouse. All the shrines, uh, the shrines of Phyrexian Obliterator, uh, okay, Nari's Wake. Phyrexian you have Obliterator. the Enchantress. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, th- I think there's like quite a few good ones. I really like the Hondins. Uh, yeah, I know I mean, the you do, but stuff, like, so, yeah. I think overall they're not great cards. Like, you well, know, I mean, you're talking about competitive. Like, if you're talking about being competitive, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a Shrines deck right now that I'm playing, and it still wins games. Sure, it's not tier one, but do you want all tier one stuff in your in the anthology? No, no. You don't. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say Mm. is I think these are great cards in the last one. All of them are almost all of them are relevant to play, at least in some kind of deck where I don't think that's what you're getting in this one. I feel like there's a lot of cards that are just bulk rares in this one that are not going to be played. Uh, Where in the last one, there was a lot of playable cards, even though they weren't all tier one cards, you know. Uh, so I feel like this set is worse than the last one, but I still think it, it's, it's, I'm still excited about it. I like getting new stuff into historic and I'm glad they didn't blow the, the power level through the roof with this thing. You know, yeah. I, I like them in, in introducing new cards and not making them too crazy. Now, like them adding spider spawning and that kind of stupid stuff. To the thing, I think they could have done a better job. I just, I, I heard other people mention this and I really agree is what are they doing with these, right? Do they, is it just random stuff that like, there's so much Amonkhet in this, which is really weird. There's Amonkhet and now there's commander stuff in it too, which is weird. Okay. I mean, they yeah. just don't explain it. They're like, like Apollo was saying they they just made all these weird little cutesy things and they're like, Ooh, now we're going to pump up white or whatever. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? yeah. What, what, why, why, what are you, is there any rhyme to your madness that you have with this? Please let us know. Please just talk to your player base. Like they're actual people, not like fucking children that you're talking to. Like, Ooh, graveyard shenanigans, <laughs> you know, yeah. historic and chill or or whatever yeah can you actually talk to us like we're adults playing a game that you think is competitive you know yeah <laughs> so. I, I actually forgot to mention that and i'm glad yeah. you did is that i think out of everything that was the most frustrating part to me it was the fact that they have all these sets these cards in here that are supposed to be in sets that we're already going to get through pioneer and i think mm-hmm. that is the most frustrating part about this whole thing is like why are you releasing these why didn't you release these with Amonkhet? like it, you know like you should be introducing things outside of the set of pioneer right like make this its own set like i don't want these aether volt aether revolt cards or or Amonkhet cards or what we have like what is this return to not return to zendikar this other zendikar set here if you know mm-hmm. like i these cards are eldritch moon yeah eldritch moon yeah you know these are all yeah. we're about to go to eldritch moon. yeah these are all cards that should just be in there like why am i paying extra for this when i could just like <laughs> you know fucking make them out of wild cards you guys should like be introducing something different right make this a, yeah. a completely different format but mm-hmm. yeah sorry i i didn't mean to cut you off or whatever but i i know i know and i wanted to mention that <clears throat> that's good no that's all i had to say yeah it's cool they went to mirrodin you know mirrodin's in there and so that's sweet but then all the other stuff is kind of yeah like you said Amonkhet and uh 
you know, th- th- I guess it's cool we're getting some commander stuff too from the commander decks because there were some cards I wanted from the commander decks that we didn't get them uh, besides the elf one, mm-hmm. uh, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, that's all I got. You know, um, I, I think I think what we have here is a community that feels like they're, like you said, we're being treated like little kids. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I thought this was the number one TCG in the world. Mm-hmm. Like this game, Magic the Gathering, is literally considered the hardest game that humans have ever developed. The hardest, the most complicated game, outbeating chess go and shoji like Mm -hmm. games that are thousands of years old you can make a turing machine with the cards from the twenty thousand cards that are in magic the gathering and i think the problem here is not necessarily the 25 cards that they have given us but the the insults that they give us we have been asking for uro to be banned no mention of anything, no talks about anything, and then they finally drop it. We've been asking for the state of game. Like, that is something that they you were using to communicate with us, the state of the game, and mm. letting us know how each format is developing, what are they going to do for Arena. And we didn't get that. We didn't get that at all. We got anthologies, like, back-to-back last year, and then we're like, are we getting, like, anything? Are we getting pioneer remastered are we going to eldridge moon is there any news like there's nothing so what we have here is a community that's completely left in the dark and it's feeling a little bit disheartened mm. and then what do they do they think they're like the badasses of the century by dropping this on us and prefacing it by saying this are you a fan of mtg arena and feeling slightly jealous of our time sparrow remaster previews well pack your bags for a trip to the past <laughs> on mtg arena historic lovers your time has come really hey. so you just compare this to time spiral remaster uh, yeah not even close you gave us amonkhet you gave us aether revolt and you gave us eldritch moon cards mm. eldritch moon we're going there regardless and you gave us cards that you already made remastered sets for. So why are you bringing them back? There's also cards here from Innistrad. Isn't Innistrad the upcoming set? So those cards could technically be reprinted in those. Yeah, I maybe. They dropped the ball. Now, I do like these cards. I do. I actually like a lot of them. But I like a lot about these cards, a lot of them that I've mentioned. And the key takeaway that I wanted to solidify with all these cards is they do take a step in the right direction for a lot of different archetypes. You know, whether it be artifacts, cycling, graveyard shenanigans, Golgari elves, snow permanence, you know, big dumb green creatures, stuff like that, you know, um, affinity uh, with artifacts, or maybe even mono brown. They're, 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 going in the right direction with these cards like Thraben Inspector helps out Death and Taxes, Declaration mm-hmm. Stone is a good exile for white um, a decent one I guess it's, you know, it's at least something um, you know so as much as I don't like the sets they chose <laughs> they did pick some good cards um, and I do think they are going to help out the historic format but once again I think the reason why so many people are disappointed, myself included, is because they're not talking to us. And when they do talk to us, they talk to us like we're fucking idiots. <laughs> you know, like yeah. like we're fucking little children. And I think that's the big problem. And I think uh, that's that's the majority of the frustration from the community. Yeah, read the room, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, you know, Tim Tim or, you know, Cade, Caden or whatever, he's not, he's just not getting it, man. I don't know what they're doing over there. Uh, I love wizard or I love magic. I don't necessarily like wizards, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but I'm excited. Um, I'm definitely going to get the set. Yep. I love cards. I love historic. I love arena. You're going to get my money, wizards. <laughs> you, you won. You won. <laughs> Yeah, we're like You're talking to me like an idiot, I guess. I hate you. Here's my money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hor- horrible yeah, hypocrites I mean, get, we all are. They get me every yeah. time, you know, but I'm yeah. like the number one idiot magic fan, so <laughs> <laughs> That is true. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, you yeah, do wear that you do wear that dunce cat, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, they don't even they don't You're even proud. have my arms behind my back, man. Mm-hmm. They're just like you ready to go on an adventure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. 
They're like, pull your pants right. down, uh, drunken dork. I'm like, oh, man, again? <laughs> uh, fine, all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Do I get the wild cards from Uro? No. Mm. No. Mm-mm. No, you already got you already oh. got those when we banned them the first time. Screw you. <laughs> but I bought more since then. <laughs> yeah. Fuck do you, you, I don't do care. Do I get anything <laughs> exciting? No, but the shiny. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, hard, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? How's this? Pay us 50 gold to get 500 gold. You want that? Huh? Huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or some other stupid new deal. <laughs> I like those ones. Whatever. Uh, any final thoughts uh, on this set? <laughs> no. No. I just ho- I hope the next I hope the next one is sooner, and I hope it's better. Agreed. That's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what? I, at this point, I just want magic to or wizards to tell us something. That's it. Just want yeah. us to tell us something. What I would prefer that. Is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Communication is always that. good in uh, in anything. You know, any walk of life, communication is great. Um, yeah, I think we know we're not going to get that. So. So here, here's a oh. final thought. Are we going to, you know, in tradition, are we going to pound our beers? Is that what's happening? Oh, I was kind of like sneaking it by. I didn't know if we were. I already yeah, finished. Good. I already yeah, finished yeah, mine. But sure. Did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then, you know what? You can say three, two, one. Goodbye, everybody. All right. Goodbye, three, two, one. Pound, motherfuckers. Cheers, all. <laughs> See you all. Peace out, guys. A little sip in there, a little, a little sip, you know. <laughs> that was good.